What's up YouTube, Jeff back again to another exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're gonna to be talking about the top problems with the Galaxy S25 Ultra and how to solve those problems as well. Um, these are not necessarily things that would make the phone a bad phone or a deal breaker or anything like that. However, it is something that people have been asking questions about, you know, how do I solve battery life issues? How do I solve issues with the S Pen, not working with MagSafe accessories, all these kind of things. I wanna get into that today. Before we get started, I remind you guys, check out our website, sammyguru.com. We have the latest Samsung news, tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. Sammy Guru Rewards program is opening very soon as well. I want to remind you guys of that. But we'll go ahead and get right into my list. The very first one is the S Pen issues. And yes, the Bluetooth is gone from the S Pen. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about that. But if you are missing your air actions and gestures and remote shutter and all that from the S Pen, uh, the only thing you can really do is if you use a Samsung wearable like the Galaxy Ring or you use the Galaxy Watch or Galaxy Watch 7, Galaxy Watch Ultra, any Galaxy Watch really, uh, you can now utilize those for things like remote shutter because of course the air gestures are completely gone and using the little button here to control your camera is gone as well. So there's not a lot we can do there since the Bluetooth is completely removed, but you can use alternate Samsung devices to at least get back some of that functionality that I know a lot of people have been missing. Now, one other problem that people ask me about with the S Pen is sometimes when they use accessories on the back of their phone, the S Pen does not work with MagSafe accessories. And the solution I have for that is my good friends at MagBack who have one of the best cases for the Galaxy S25 Ultra that also works perfectly with all your MagSafe accessories and still allows the S Pen to work. This year, they upgraded their case. They have the Elite case, which not only has amazing protection, which you guys can see here, it's got amazing grip here, this little grippy section on each side. The buttons are very responsive. They now have a finger loop on the back. Look at that right there. You can slide your finger in there to utilize the phone. You do have a kickstand as well here. And all of this stuff comes in addition to being able to utilize the S Pen with all every single MagSafe attachment you want. This thing has no problems recognizing the S Pen no matter what I attach to it. In addition, you can customize your MagSafe case uh, from MagBack utilizing their various colored loops. So instead of, you guys see how I switched this out to red, it came with a black loop by default. They've also got things you can switch out for the little grippy parts on the side. You could turn that red, they have various colors, and they have their MagStick if I can get this in focus for you guys, their mag stick, which you can stick this to anything. I usually stick it to like in my car on the dash. And then you just take the phone and you stick it right there on the mag stick. So it works perfectly. So not only does this solve the issue uh, with the S Pen not working with MagSafe accessories because it works perfectly with MagBack. I've used it every year. Uh, the last few years they've had great cases. This year the Elite one's even better. You even got a cover here for your charge port on the bottom, which you guys can see right there. It's a little flap here keeps dust out of your charging port. So can't say enough nice things about the MagBag case. I do appreciate them sending it out to me uh, and sponsoring the video, but this really is a great fix for all those issues with the S Pen not working with MagSafe accessories. Up next, charging issues with the five amp cable. Now this is another issue that we've seen repeated by a lot of people on forums like Reddit, uh, X, etc. cetera. Lots of people have been saying they can't get top charging speeds when using a five amp cable. Samsung has a knowledge that there's an issue here. Samsung Italy, over on X, we actually wrote an article about this at Sammy Guru, that there is an issue when charging with a five amp cable. In fact, let me go on here and I'll show you guys the article we wrote. There's an issue with charging with a five amp cable, particularly with some 45 watt chargers. However, you do not need the five amp cable to get quick charging 2.0 and 45 watts. Because of the new 15 volt three amp spec, you can actually use the included three amp cable to get the same fast speeds. However, some people, have reported issues still persisting when using a 45 watt cable with the three amp charger, a three amp cable with the 45 watt charger rather. So if that is you, if you're still noticing that issue, Samsung is going to issue a patch, but for now, I recommend trying the three amp cable with the 45 watt charger. That is the cable that came in the box and see if that works for you. But there should be a software update coming very soon for that issue. The next one is something people have asked me about a lot on my video comments. High gesture hint is missing. So you guys see down here, when I go, you can see the little gesture hint down there. A lot of people hate that gesture hint and you can turn this off. You gotta download GoodLock and you've gotta get the Navstar module. The Navstar module was not available 
initially when first One UI 7 came out, but it is available now. There's Navstar. If you get Navstar in here, you can go ahead and take off. And then here you can see you have these various options. Now, transparent hint, that won't actually get rid of this down here. You need to turn on the enable extra gesture settings. And then once you go down here to the main settings, when you go to display and you go to your gesture settings, you'll now have the option to turn off the gesture hint. So you see right here, gesture hint. We already enabled the transparency, but if you can turn this off completely and you see that little line is now completely gone from the bottom. So that's what a lot of people want. They do not like the gesture hint. Now this thing at the bottom is indicating the Samsung wallet is available there. That is not a gesture hint. You can see when I go into an application, I no longer have the line there. So you do need good lock and Navstar to fix that particular problem, but it is pretty easy to fix. Now, battery life issues, I really haven't had any huge battery life issues on my S25 Ultra, but there is one thing that I recommend. There's a lot of things you can do, obviously, but there's one thing I really recommend if you have any battery life issues, go into the settings, go into device care, and unless you're doing a lot of heavy multitasking, I even do a ton of multitasking, you can turn the performance profile from standard to light which prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speeds. Now this doesn't restrict you from getting great performance during games because this setting is completely turned off in games and ignored. It uses the game booster game performance settings inside game booster when you're gaming. So you don't have to worry about that. As long as you can get the same performance you need for your daily activities, this is gonna prioritize cooling and give you better battery efficiency. Another thing you can do to keep your phone running at peak optimization, which also can save a little bit of battery, is if you go into the auto optimization and do auto restart, you can do restart on a schedule and restart it like at 3 a.m. on a night you're not using it. That clears out some of the junk and cache and stuff in the apps and in the background, and in general, make your device just run a little bit smoother. I honestly haven't had any battery life issues yet myself or thermal issues. I noticed some other people have had those, but sometimes this can help with some of those issues as well. If things build up in the background, you can do this and it will help out quite a bit. Up next, spam calls. Now, Samsung has a huge fix for this. They've had the last couple generations in One UI. If you head over to your phone app and go to the settings, you'll notice the text call option. Now, inside text call, what this will do, if you turn it on, it is on by default in a lot of regions, but some regions it is not. If you turn this on, what it will do is it will allow an option for you to tap when a phone call comes in and Bixby will go ahead and answer the phone call for you. When Bixby answers the call, you can see what the other person is actually saying. It'll be written there. You can also play the other person's voice if you wanna hear it. At any point, you can tap on the screen to have various quick responses, which you can set up customized ones right here. If at any time you wanna pick up a call, you can go ahead and do that as well. But if it is a spam call and you're screening it, then you can go ahead and just let Bixby take care of it. Or you can tell them that you'll call them later. And then of course, if it's a spam call, just block the number and then never answer it again. Mark it as spam. So Bixby text call is absolutely phenomenal for spam calls. I really don't answer any calls where I don't know the number anymore. For this reason, I let Bixby take all those calls for me and screen them. Up next is one hand operation because this is a large phone, no matter how you slice it. And uh, the best way to get one hand operation using the Galaxy S25 Ultra is no doubt to use Goodlock's One Hand Operation Plus module. Now, One Hand Operation Plus can be installed as a standalone module, but it is still a part of Goodlock. It's right here. And it has some bunch of options that you can use to make this phone easier to use with one hand. I've went over it in detail in other videos, but it enables a left and a right handle that are customizable where you can have long swipe and short swipe actions to do various things, bring up your widgets, rotate the screen, open a specific app. You see you have it open X here. Um, you can do the same thing on the right. You can have a long swipe over here, bring up your quick tools, your quick launcher, your task switcher. Now I do recommend you leave the short swipe to be the default gestures if you're using gesture nav, otherwise it can get a little confusing, but there's so many things you can do here to customize these with the animation, the S Pen gestures, uh, when to hide the handles, app exceptions of when the, the handles won't appear. Um, you can change the touch width right here. You can change the, the size of this, of how long it is. I recommend keeping it not too large because otherwise it can interfere with like your edge panel and some things like that. You can also move the position. You can move it down. 
I like to move it down so it's just below the edge panel because that's usually where I end up swiping to do a lot of my gestures. You can also change the handle color if you're interested. You can make the color orange so it'll appear like that on the side. And it does look pretty cool overall to customize this on a daily basis. One Hand Operation Plus is an amazing app for your productivity and just everyday enjoyment of using this device since it is a very large phone. Camera issues. Good Lock also has an app that can help you with any camera issues and it is actually built into the camera app once you install it. It's also a standalone module and I'm talking of course about Camera Assistant which you guys can see right here. You can download it in Good Lock or as a standalone app from the Galaxy Store. You can change for instance auto lens switching. I always turn this particular option off. Um, because auto lens switching is on by default and I don't want it to pick the lens for me. I want to be able to do it myself. Uh, down here, quick tap shutter, prioritize focus over speed. A couple of other ones that I like to utilize. There's a lot of pro options in here as well if you use your phone for video creation, content creation like audio monitoring, and save videos to external storage if you create a USB-C device. You can also customize your zoom shortcuts and add 100x zoom there. I don't really use that that often, so it's not something that I would utilize. However, these options that I mentioned here with the quick tap shutter, prioritize focus, and auto lens switching can improve your overall experience with shutter lag and things like that in the camera app, and I do recommend installing Camera Assistant. Once you go into the camera application, you can access this from the main settings by just scrolling down, and you'll see it right below vibration feedback once you've installed the module. Lag and animation issues. This seems like it's always come up on Samsung phones. And finally this year, it seems like Samsung has fixed this once and for all. And yes, it is a good lock module that solves the problem, but it can also be, be downloaded as a standalone module. And that is the Home Up module. Home Up now has the ability to completely tune all of your animation preferences, whether you like them slow, fast, however you want them to appear, right here inside the gesture settings. Gesture settings can be tuned on a number of different levels. And if you go in here, you'll be able to tune them either using simple tuning, which allows you to go from kind of slow, which is emotionally to fast. These four preset options, which basically emulate some other popular phone manufacturers. And then the one that I'm using, which is advanced tuning. Advanced tuning uses the cubic bezier curve and the dampness, stiffness, and friction parameters to determine how your animations will appear for various things like icon scale, tracking position, and also the home screen animation. You can take complete control of this and we will have a full guide on how to tune these to your preferences. We'll also be doing some tuning for our readers over at Sammy Guru soon, offering that as a service. If you guys are interested in that, that'll be coming available as part of our Sammy Guru Rewards program. But for now, you can definitely use the simple tuning and also the preset options to change the default animations if you find that they're too slow or too fast and get the optimal animations for you. Display saturation. Samsung also dialed this issue in a few years back. If you do not like the display color profile, color temperature, or saturation, you can go into settings, go into display. You can go down to screen mode, choose between vivid and natural, but that's not all. If you want more natural colors and less saturated, you can choose natural. But if you want to play around with the vivid colors and just change the temperature, you can also go down to advanced settings and you can not only adjust the RGB sliders, you can change the vividness to make it more or less vivid. It actually is on the lowest vivid setting by default. So you get more and more saturated colors as you turn this up. I kind of like to keep it at one or two personally, but you can play with it to your preferences. Samsung added this. As always, they respond to user feedback, which is one of the things I love about Samsung, giving us the options to tune the display to our personal preferences. Final thing that I've heard about is the vertical app drawer in alphabetical order. And unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about this. On the Galaxy S25 series out of the box until Samsung issues an update, if you go and sort using custom order, which is the default, you're going to notice that you have the horizontal swipe to get through your app drawer. However, if you sort these using alphabetical order, you will have the vertical app drawer. So for now, if you would like to use the vertical app drawer, your only option is to go to sort choose alphabetical order and it will do this. Now, if you're wondering how I have so many columns inside my app drawer, a lot of people have asked about this in past videos as well. The way I have that is also using home up. So if you go into home up, you can tune this using the app drawer settings. The way you do this is if you go into home screen, you'll be able to scroll down and you'll be able to find the app list columns. You see, I have the maximum there, which is seven columns. So you can choose as many as you would like and you can get all this information, which is very dense. You don't need to scroll very far 
even if you have a lot of apps like I do. Now, of course, I wasn't able to cover every single problem in the entire world in this video, but if you guys have other questions, concerns, or comments, I'd be happy to answer them below. Just drop them there. Also, stay good to Sammy Guru. We'll be covering everything about the S25 Ultra, S25, S25 Plus, including a one-month review coming up very soon if you're still considering the phone. Definitely check out the uh, brand new MagVac Elite case from my friends at MagVac. Definitely appreciate them sponsoring the video and sending this out as I do love this case. You can pick up this case with a discount using the link and the code in my description if you are interested. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.